YouTube fanatic, a nobody, and they were going to give her the microphone to attack Donald Trump, why would he go there? You didn't know that Roger Ailes was capable of uh, such dirty propaganda tactics, did you? You thought that he got where he is by being a nice guy and giving you conservative values? No, my friends, Trump did the right thing. He'll survive without them. And that's all I want to say. And now, many of you disagree with me. I get it. We can argue over that. We're also talking about White Lives Matter, the execution of an American dissident in Oregon. We're talking about the confirmation of the Zika virus in Los Angeles. We're going to play some of the sound on the confrontation with Mr. Trump last night on abortion by a reporter who has a real lot of guts. Yep, the punk leftist progressive from NBC is very tough with Trump and quite supine with Obama, with Hillary, and any Democrat, socialist, Islamist. But they're not afraid of him. Just shows you how brave they really are. Let's take a couple of quick calls on the Savage Nation. I've got callers all over the place. We have one open line. Brian on WMAL in Washington, fire away. 30 seconds or less. Not there. Next case. George on KLIF, line two. Go ahead, please. The Dr. Savage, do you believe that since Trump is not showing not going to the debate that he is best suited to deal with Obama when he leaves the White House? Because you know he's going to have a TV studio in that palace. Quite don't understand the question, but I kind of do and kind of don't. KSFO, Mike, you're next up 30 seconds or less. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I just wanted to say that the Fox bully got punched in the mouth. And that you can see the blood, it's coming out of everywhere. Well, 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 which bully got punched? Who's the bully? The Fox bully, Ailes and Murdoch. I mean, they came after Trump. They got oh, punched. Ailes is a, real, is a real cowardly bully. Hides behind, you know, gated walls and thinks that he can control the world with his little, uh, you know, with his computer. They hate Trump because he's a bigger man than them. He's a better man than them. And he got where he is without them. That's what they hate about him. And I got to tell you something. This is very satisfying for me. Because I'm the only American Major League broadcaster banned by the same group of devils. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Of course, you only want to talk about Trump and Fox News, and that's understandable. It's a big deal. I want you to make a note of something I'm about to say to you. No Trump ads run on the Michael Savage show. No ads for Donald Trump are running before, after, or during the Michael Savage show. That's all you need to know. Just run with that one. For those of you who are following the mascot of the Savage Nation, my little dog Teddy, who's been with me for 10 or 11, 12 years, I don't know how long it's been, it seems like a day. Uh, I had a long night. He was under anesthesia all morning. I just got a note a second ago that all the extractions, all of his lower teeth were removed. Poor little guy. And they're putting sutures in, and then he'll be uh, waiting for the anesthesia to wear off. I'll get him after the show, and I'll pick him up. I don't know how I'm going to have a dog without teeth. I don't get it. But I guess that works somehow. Now, speaking of toothless attack dogs, I want to talk about Roger Ailes. Roger Ailes is a man that needs to be studied, and it's going to require, it would require someone on the order of Orson Welles to write the story of this man. If you go to the Wikipedia page, and much of it's, who knows how accurate it is. The one about me is fairly accurate. I'm sure the one about him is very accurate because he has a staff that monitors it. Ailes was a media consultant for Richard Nixon, Ronald Reagan, and George Bush. That's good. That means he's on the right side of things politically. It means he knows how to manipulate the press. That's good. And he made a good career for himself. He makes a nice living. Unfortunately, he suffers from hemophilia and was often hospitalized as a youth, according to Wikipedia. We read that his father was abusive. Now, I want to focus on the fact that it says that in his Wikipedia entry. His father was abusive. Do you think that has anything to do with his contempt for Donald Trump, that he doesn't really like dominant males? I don't know. Could be. Maybe he likes them more. It's hard to say. But he's a television man. He worked for the Mike Douglas show and uh, things like that. And he was a political consultant along with Lee Atwater who guided George Bush 
the first one to victory in the Republican primaries and later come from behind victory over Dukakis. <laughs> he produced the revolving door ad. So he's been around the political world for a very long time. And then he hit it big when he met uh, Rupert Murdoch. And then he hit it real big with Fox News. And we've all loved Fox News for a number of years until they became very liberal. They started to move to the left rather rapidly over the last few years. And now we wind up seeing that Roger Ailes has Michael Moore on Megyn Kelly's show attacking Donald Trump. And I think that that completes the circle. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. What more do you need to know that Michael Moore is now working with Megyn Kelly to, de to denigrate Donald Trump? There's nothing more you need to know. Now, whether Trump goes to the debate or not, I don't know. He could change his mind. They can negotiate it out. He could finally uh, talk to Murdoch, the, the god of it all. Rupert Moloch, I called him for many years, if you know what Moloch refers to. And he will only talk to Rupert Moloch, as he should, because Ailes is, his, Ailes is a, basically a general, and Moloch is the, what shall we call them, uh, Murdoch would be a, uh, I don't know the exact military designation, but Ailes is only a four-star general. That's pretty high up. But he's not the leader of the army. Field Marshal, right? Murdoch would be, Rupert Moloch would be Field Marshal Murdoch. Field Marshal Moloch will talk, is the only one that Trump will talk to. What are they going to do if Trump wins? What are they going to do then? How are they going to deal with that one? That's what Moloch is probably thinking about. Moloch's thinking several steps ahead because I happen to know for a fact, at least I suspect, Moloch is backing Hillary, incidentally. You don't know that. Oh, yeah, Moloch's an open borders guy. He wants a flood of immigrants in your, in your, in, in your breakfast, at your breakfast table. Moloch wants open borders, and Moloch wants Hillary to win. And Moloch doesn't even run the network anymore. His children do, who are very liberal. Incidentally, you should know all of this. None of, none, nobody will say it because they're all afraid of them, and I am too. I'm so afraid of them that I'll tell you the truth because I took a, an oath to God before the show. You ask the guys who look at me we, on, on a Skype screen. I'm in one studio in San Francisco there in Dallas. We have a Skype co communication. They can look at me during a show. I prayed before the show, and they heard what I said. Am I right, Jim? I looked up, and I said, God, the God I believe in, the only God, give me the strength to tell the truth today. That's all I said. I'll leave it to you, the listener. We're talking about the execution of an innocent peace protester in Oregon by the federal government without any outcry by the vermin in the media. The very same media who was so brave in attacking Donald Trump have nothing to say about Obama's crimes, Hillary's crimes, Sanders' communist background, nothing. Instead, they attacked Trump. So I want to play for you last night's interchange between Donald Trump and a so-called reporter, a leftist punk from Manhattan, no doubt, you can hear it in his voice. And Trump gives it to him pretty good. Let's start with clip 11. I want to hear clip 11 on the Savage Nation. By the full soundbite from Tim Russert, you said to him was, I'm very pro-choice. I hate the concept of abortion. Correct. But I'm very Why didn't you read that? By the way, why didn't you read that before? I pulled it up the wire. No, but why wouldn't... didn't you read that before? You didn't read, I hate the concept Trump, of abortion. I'm reading it to you now. My question Excuse me. Excuse is, me. Are you a trustworthy Excuse or me. Very trustworthy. Alien? More so than you. I, because you know what? You didn't read the question. See, when you quoted Tim Russert, you didn't read what you just said. Read I it again. I'm quoting you. I'll read, no, read it, it now. again. I'll read it now. Go ahead. I'm very pro-choice. I hate the concept of, of abortion. Okay, you didn't read. Why didn't you say and when you asked the question before, that I hate the concept because of abortion. Because the question from the pro-life group no, 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 can't no, be trusted. No. You were so quoting Tim Russell, and quoting you were you. quoting, excuse quoting me, you. you were quoting Tim, and you were quoting me. Why didn't you read my quote the way I said it? Sir, I tried to pull it up, and I didn't have Wi-Fi. Well, then you got to get Wi-Fi, okay? Well, Don't ask me questions okay. like that. You're not a very good reporter doing that. No, he's right. In fact, he should be fired. NBC's Peter Alexander should be fired. He asked the question of Trump without reading the entire quote. He, his, his excuse, did you hear his excuse? I don't have Wi-Fi in this room. You expect anything less from NBC? I don't. Nothing but communism? You expect anything less from that organization that gave us MSNBC? I don't. Then he went and did a uh, speech in Iowa, and one of the idiots started blowing a whistle. But unlike other Republicans who would sit there cowering to the whistleblower, oh, oh, please bring the whistleblower up. Maybe she has a, a legitimate point. I want you to listen to clip 13 
how Trump deals with a low-life street protester in 13. We're number one by far. So I was trying to equate that to what I'm doing. I'm running a campaign. Thank you, darling. I don't think that's a University of Iowa student, do you? Get him out. Ready? Are you ready? Get him out of here. Get him out of here. These people. How come they don't blow whistles when Obama speaks? How come they don't blow whistle when Hillary lies about Benghazi, when she lies about uh, top secret emails? How come they don't blow whistles when the communist Bernie Sanders parades himself as a legitimate American candidate? How come there are no whistles? I'll tell you why. Because all of you listening to this show, you're too nice. You're far too nice. You've been, you've been turned into mush. You've been made docile by the legal establishment. They've rendered you impotent. They have destroyed your manhood. That's the only answer. I mean, my feelings are quite strong on this. Whether he'll do it or not, I don't know. He's going to be on or not on, whatever. Who knows? And um, reactions from the Trump interview from the conservative treehouse are very interesting. Trump's the 2016 wrote, Savage is the only radio talker remaining that the tentacles of the establishment have not penetrated. Savage has been a treeper long before the Internet was even in people's homes. He's long understood that there's not two parties, just one. He stood for borders, language, and culture for as long as I can remember. He's been with Trump from day one in July of 2015 when he said Trump is the Winston Churchill of our time. What more can we ask for? He is one of us. Conservative hippie wrote, absolutely, in fact, Savage's phrase, Democrats and Republicrats explained it all years and years ago. I believe having listened to Savage for so long, I was primed and prepared to recognize the existence of the Uniparty when the evidence presented itself, and I was all in right away when Sundance presented these great articles here. No, sitting here in disbelief, it was like finally everything became clearer. Also, Savage has been calling out the talk radio industry for many years and has warned that there was, well, so much I know that I cannot say. Another rotor, Parti Par Girl, says, The whole Savage show was great. He went back to his archives starting with January 2011 and played clips of old interviews with Trump. It's amazing how consistent Trump has been. But it was impressive to hear it played out like that. And then there's more. And I want to thank all of you who really listen to the show rather than just think you hear what I say. I really want to thank you for that. The phone number is 855-400-7282. So the Oregon sheriffs or the FBI executed a peaceful protester. They are war criminals. They've committed a crime. There should be an investigation. If not by, we can't have a fair investigation in America because our attorney general is biased. I am calling on this national radio show for an international investigation of which police officer executed that Oregon protester. I want to know who did it. Was it an FBI agent? Was it an Oregon State policeman? The man was not shooting. He put his hands out of the car, and they killed him. Why is there no outcry? Because he's not black? You know, white lives do matter. This happened in America. And you said it can't happen in America? You're saying it can't happen here? It did happen here. It did happen here. We had an execution of peaceful protesters, but you don't care because they were, I guess they were militiamen, and they don't look like the men, the metro men walking around the streets of your city. The militiamen who were killed, the one of them who was killed, they don't look like your metro sexual boyfriend, do they? So they're not really Americans. Nah, their lives don't matter. The metro's lives matter. Well, how can I say to you, everyone's lives matter. Oregon wildlife refuge protesters. One was executed by either the Oregon State Police or the FBI. Or it could have been the ATF. We don't know who was there. Do we really know who shot him? I mean, I go all the way back in radio to Janet Reno who executed a number of people. You don't remember that? Do you remember what went on in, the, in, in Texas when they killed 72 men, women, and children and burned them alive and not one of them went to prison? You forgot that? They're enjoying their retirement somewhere, enjoying a nice fat paycheck, enjoying their retirement somewhere with an RV driving around America, retired cops who executed those people back in the, uh, in the 